Hello everybody, welcome back to Coombe Valley Campers. Today we're going to be showing you how to wire up a simple 12 volt DC circuit to bring your wiring a new lease of life. Before we make a start, I just wanted to tell you all that we now have a Patreon page. If you'd like to be one of our Patreon supporters, we have now set the limit at one pound only. You can be a Patreon supporter of our channel for just one pound. It really, really helps us out and it means we can bring you camper van footage more often. Now, you can also help us out by buying some of our merchandise or buying any of the products you see today in the links below or on our products page at www.coombellycampers.co.uk. In the past, we've covered quite a lot of uh, leisure wiring in your camper van. We've done split charge systems, we've done how to route your wiring, installing fridges, and also uh, the basics you will need in your camper van. Now, today we're gonna be showing you how to wire up a very simple 12 volt circuit. Okay, and for that we are going to use, use a 12 volt leisure battery, some wiring, a switch, a fuse holder, and the end appliance, which in this case is going to be a strip of LED lights, which is something you might be fitting into your camper. The tools and items you will need today to make your wiring circuit are as follows a 12 volt DC leisure battery, wire cutters, wire strippers, terminal crimps, crimping tools, cable ties, a multimeter, wiring, fuse holders, fuses, fabric tape, heat shrink, a heat gun, and terminals, in this case, non-insulated terminals. I'm gonna go into detail today the size of wiring you're gonna be needing for your different appliances. I'm not gonna go into it comprehensively because at the end of the day, I just wanna show you how to make a wiring circuit. If there are any questions about which fuses to use or which wiring to use or grade of wiring or size of wiring to use, please, contact the manufacturer or supplier of the item you have bought, just so you don't have any problems in the future. That being said, safety first. If you are working on a live circuit, please make sure to disconnect your battery first. Negative terminal first, all right, negative terminal first. Disconnect the battery before you make a start, all right? In terms of wiring then, what are you going to need for your different appliances? Now, I've been speaking speaking to James at Rain Automotive, and he, he's been giving me some general outlines as to what wiring you are going to need to wire the appliances in your camper. Now, in the UK, we speak about, we speak about wiring or cabling in cross-sectional area in millimeter squared. Now that's not the diameter of the cable, that's the cross-sectional cross -sectional area in millimeter squared. In America, you use AWG, which is American wire gauge. I know very little about that. So in the, for the moment, I'm just gonna be talking about UK wiring, which refers to the different cross-sectional area in millimeter squared. That being said, if you are wiring something like a fridge, you are going to be needing 2.5 millimeter squared wiring up to a length of around about four to five meters. After that, you may come across some losses in the wiring. And if that is the situation, I would recommend you speak to the fridge supplier as to what cable you should use over a run over four to five meters. For LED lights, USB sockets or cigar lighters, <clears throat> A TV or a water pump, generally a wire with a cross-sectional area of 0.75 millimeter square is perfectly adequate. Now, these are general guidelines. Again, if you've got any questions or you've got any worries about which wiring you need to be using for your appliance or your USB socket, your LED lighting, 
then please refer to the manufacturer's instructions or manufacturer's guidelines as to which cabling you should use. That's now out of the way. I can get rid of my notes. We can start talking about how to actually wire up your circuit. Today then, we are going to be making a circuit to turn on and off our LED lighting strip. Now, we're going to be using a 0.75mm squared cable. We're going to be using a 10 amp fuse in a regular size uh, fuse holder. We're going to be putting a switch in it, and this switch itself does have a little blue LED to tell you when it's on and off. Um, to me, this is very simple because we do it day in, day out. However, I'm going to break it down into different sections so it's very easy for you to understand and uh, there's no confusion with a bit of luck. So, the things you are going to need then, and I've already spoken about it, but we need a live wire from our battery. We need a live feed from our battery to our lights. But we need a way to protect that wire from any overload that it may experience. And for that, we're going to be using an inline fuse. All right, an inline fuse will pop or break before any wiring starts to smolder if that wiring has been overloaded or there is a fault in the appliance. Could be anything, but a fuse is your safety and it will stop the live current going into the appliance. So it will pop the fuse before it causes any damage to the appliance. In between the fuse and the appliance itself, we are going to be installing a switch. So you can turn that appliance on and off as and when you want and as a um, wiring circuit is a circuit you need a return path back to your battery and for that we are going to be using a negative lead or an earth lead and in this case we're going to be using a brown wire now i know that's different to 240 volt ac wiring because 240 volt ac wiring the live is brown but in uh, the wiring looms that i get from rain automotive and generally uh, VW wiring, which I'm most familiar with, the earth circuit is in brown wiring. So live today is going to be in red, earth is going to be in brown. To simplify our circuit today, then we're going to go right back to school when you were drawing out simple circuits. Um, don't roast me in the comments for something I've done wrong. I'm literally just trying to show you the very, very basic terms of wiring up a circuit. So we have our battery with a positive terminal. From the positive terminal, you want to go into one side of your fuse. You come out the other side of your fuse into the live side of your switch. You come out the appliance side of the switch, still with your live, in this case red, to the live terminal of the appliance. In this case, I've drawn you a nice little bulb. Once the, okay, the return circuit from that appliance is going to be the earth or the ground wire. Now you can see the ground wire coming out here, back to the battery. Now that is the very, very, it's the circuit in the simplest terms. What you will have noticed is an extra earth going to your switch here. Now that earth is to make a little blue LED in your switch light up and we will go through that. So the next thing we're going to do is make our wiring for each section. So we're going to need one, two, three live wires or with terminals and we're going to need one, two earth wires back to the earth terminal on our battery. Let's make a start. Now you've planned out your circuit, and again, this is in its most simplest form. This could be the leisure battery in your vehicle, this will be the fuse panel in the cupboard of your interior, this will be your control panel, and this is your fridge, for example. So once all of that's planned out, you need to cut your wiring to length. For this, we're gonna use our side cutters, cable cutters. And we are using the 0.75 0.75 millimeter wiring. I'm 
and that's it we have one two three live cables one to the fuse from the fuse to the switch from the switch to the appliance and now we're going to cut two earth cables one from the appliance to the battery and one from the switch to the battery you can link those two together but again for the simplistic terms we are going to be wiring them both up to the earth terminal negative terminal on the battery once you've cut all your cables to length you need to terminate them and we're going to start with terminating the end that goes onto the battery now I've gone ahead and put some battery terminals on each post of the battery. This on the positive is known as a disconnect. Um, basically means you can wire the main terminal up to your starter motor, for example, or the engine, but the lower voltage wiring can actually be disconnected. So you can't actually physically start the vehicle. Anyway, we're going to be wiring this lead up to the battery terminal, which means we will need a ring terminal and we are going to use this type of ring terminal here I'm going to pull off that blue plastic shield so we have a ring terminal on this end of the wire and for the fuse these two cables we're going to need one and quarter inch female spade terminals and they look just like this now this terminal in particular is a non-insulated terminal and round that terminal I'm going to put one of these protective boots. Failing that, I can use a bit of heat shrink and that'll insulate the terminal also. Now, from most of your motor factor stores, you will have terminals that look like this with a blue sheath and these are known as insulated terminals. I don't like these, I don't use them, mainly because um, I'm not a fan of the crimp. I much prefer the factory style non-insulated terminal and then protecting it afterwards. Saying that, these are perfectly adequate if that's all you can get hold of. So I'm now going to go ahead, remove the ends of these cables using the wire strippers. These ones. I'm going to remove the ends of the cables with these wire strippers. And then I'm going to pop the table terminals on the ends with our crimping tool. You can't fit a terminal onto the end of your wire without removing the edge of the insulation, the end of the insulation. And in this case, we are going to be removing about five mil of insulation. If you do not have a wire stripper tool like this, you can use a side cutter or cable cutter or if you have access to one of these wire strippers, you can use the holes at the bottom of the wire strippers. Now this is purely for emergency in my drawer, um, but you can see you can use them perfectly well using that tool. Or if you're careful, you can use the wire cutters to remove just the insulation. However, using the wire stripper tool is the easiest and most convenient. You're just gonna lay your cable in there and it's this part of the tool that's actually going to remove the insulation from the end of the wire. We've laid everything out now, everything is prepared to connect and terminate to all the cables and we're very nearly at the completion of our circuit. So at this end we have a ring terminal that will go to our positive post. This is going to have a little bit of heat shrink over it, I'll show you how to do that later, but it will then go to a one quarter inch female spade terminal. Into the fuse, out the fuse via another one quarter inch spade terminal. 
into the back of the switch. Now the switch is slightly smaller terminals, these are 3 8 to the appliance, which in this case is our LED light, I'm actually gonna use, just to show you the different type of terminals out there, the 1 8 inch male and female terminals. From the appliance, we're going to be using the red for the live, the negative is gonna be black, and in this particular circuit, we're gonna then run to a brown earth wire, which will run to our battery terminal and we're going to terminate it with a ring connector on the end. And from the back of the switch, our negative terminal on the back of the switch, we're going to run that into the same ring terminal into the back of the battery. And then that is our complete circuit. So let's make a move. To crimp down all of these terminals, we are going to be using this Durite crimping tool. Now you can get these, as well as all the other tools you see here today, from our website. Check in the link below and uh, go to our products page on our website and you can buy all of the tools you see here today. The last stage now is to just put the heat shrink over the terminals that don't have a supplied boot. In this case, the ring terminals, we've crimped them on to the end of the wire. Now we're gonna slip a little bit of heat shrink over it. Now this heat shrink is, it is the more expensive stuff because it's got an adhesive inside, which means once it's shrunk down, it actually sticks to the item you're covering. Um, and for that, I'm just gonna use a heat gun just gonna wave it over and you can watch it shrink round the terminal, round the wire, and it gives it a little bit of extra mechanical strength and a little bit of uh, insulation on there as well. If you just see out the edges there, you can just see where the uh, adhesive has started to squeeze out the end. And there we have it. We have completely wired in our new circuit. We have leisure battery, fuse, switch, appliance, in this case the LED light, and then our earth circuit back to that terminal. And the last thing we need to do is turn it on. And there we go. We've even got the blue light on the switch just to tell you that the appliance is on. Now, it may not be as obvious as a bright white LED light that your appliance is on, which is why people choose to have the little blue LED. And this is it in its basic, ba most basic form. Of course, in your van, you'll have a, a gang of fuses or a huge panel with fuses. Your switch may be integrated into the appliance itself. It might not be separate. So you may just need to run a live to your appliance, but this is how to wire in the circuit. That's the most simplest form I can show you to you. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, Please support the channel. Times are a little bit harder now, I know, but we now have a Patreon page with the minimum set to one pound a month. Please go ahead and support us if you feel compelled to. If you can't, go and subscribe or click on the notification bell or give us a like. That all helps the channel as well because it gets other people who want to support in and liking our channel. Everything you've seen in this video today is available for sale. Just click on the links in the description below. That will show you our website where we have a products page and you can buy everything here. Again, we've got hats for sale um, and there'll be more merch coming up soon. And uh, if you want to know any more about any wiring, have a look at the links just here. They'll tell you all the other bits and pieces we've shown so far on the video, such as split wiring, split charge wiring, and or how to route, safely route your cabling in your van. Thank you very much and be safe.